Hey guys, my name is Morgan Schmidt. I'm a Monmouth University Health Studies major, and this is my presentation on my theories of leadership that I kind of live by, and I would say they're servant leadership and adaptive leadership. What theory of leadership guides my actions? Today I'm going to talk about two theories of leadership, being servant leadership and adaptive leadership. Servant leadership is a type of leadership approach that revolves around focusing on leadership from the point of view of the leader and his or her behaviors. Servant leadership emphasizes that leaders to be attentive to concerns of their followers, empathize with them, and nurture them. Servant leaders put followers first, empower them, and help them develop their full potential and their full capacities as a person. In general, the leader serves his or her followers as well as guiding them to reach their full potential as followers. How does servant leadership pertain to my everyday personal life and my professional life? Servant leadership pertains to my professional life because I'm a certified medical assistant during a global pandemic and in an urgent care. As a medical assistant within an urgent care, I do a lot more than just do a patient's vitals. I serve and care for these patients. Sometimes I come home from a long day of work and get so emotional due to having a draining day at work because I'm a form of an outlet for my patients to vent to, as well as, in a way, a therapist. A lot of patients I have are elderly patients, so sometimes they just want to talk to somebody as well as tell me the reason for their visit. If my patients are showing signs of sadness, I always try to empower them and tell them that they made the right choice by coming in to be seen. I have become very good at setting good examples within my office for training new hires and new interns as well. Also, I have recently helped a bunch of patients with severe anxiety, such as having panic attacks or whatever within the office, by being able to calm them down and diffuse the situation. My friends and I are examples of servant leadership because our jobs consist of serving patients almost every day. We lead by behaviors and by example for our followers, in case our patients, and we try to empower them in their sick states instead of making them feel less for coming in and admitting that they're sick. Within healthcare, there's a bunch of fancy machinery that helps diagnose people. I purposely put a CAT scan machine as one of them because I firsthand have a story in regards to why I chose adaptive leadership. Another theory of leadership that guides my actions is adaptive leadership. Adaptive leadership focuses on the adaptations required of people in the changing environments. Adaptive leaders prepare and encourage people to deal with change. Adaptive leaders encourage people to face and deal with problems, challenges, and changes that occur within their lives. This form of leadership stresses the activities of a leader and their relationship to work of followers and the context in which they find themselves. How does adaptive leadership pertain to my everyday personal life or my professional life? Well, I lead by example through having personal experiences by overcoming a rare autoimmune brain disease known as anti-MDA autoimmune receptor encephalitis back when I was 18 years old, a second semester college freshman in March 2016. At first, sadly, when I went to the nearby hospital by my house to hopefully find out what was wrong with me before I knew what was wrong with me, I was mistreated. It was misdiagnosed due to what doctors there claimed was a lack of knowledge. However, I claim it was ignorance on their part and foul treatment. I won't go into details what happened there, but I will never work for any hospital in New Jersey due to their inability to be educated on autoimmune diseases. I know I sound better. However, I remember going under into what I felt like was a long nap that ended up being a three-month medically induced coma, and I thought to myself, as I was going under, I can conquer anything and I can adapt to anything. During this long sleep, I was actually airlifted to a better hospital, probably the best hospital I've been, ever been to in my life, known as Philadelphia's Jefferson University Hospital, where I was actually treated like a human and a patient and not neglected like the hospital I was at in New Jersey. When I woke up, I was angry with what had happened to me, but I did not need any type of cognitive or physical therapy. I made a really quick recovery and made the medical book of science for being the youngest girl in medical history with Botox put in her mouth for precautionary reasons. Sometimes when a patient wakes up, they tend to bite and such on their cheeks, test why they thought Botox would be a good precautionary measure. I was on medical leave of absence from Monmouth U for three semesters, hence why I'm now just becoming a senior at Monmouth University. I'm not going to lie, but getting sick left a permanent scar on my life as well as permanent scars on my body that I never wanted. Part of my tongue is missing, hence why I get tongue tied more often than I like to. I have a trach scar in the middle of my neck. I have a pick line scar on my arm and I have a feeding tube scar on my stomach. The usual cause of anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis is a funky-looking monster-like tumor that can grow eyes or teeth known as a teratoma tumor that can develop in women's ovaries. 
However, not a single teratoma tumor cell was found in my body because, as I, in terms of my immune system, destroyed it most likely. To this day, I don't know what caused my autoimmune brain disease, but stress has been said to cause many autoimmune diseases within people, so I adapted with this reality and switched my major to health studies. I'm now 22, about to be 23 years old, and I luckily can say my autoimmune disease, from what I now know, was a one-time deal. I have been four years, about to be five years, free of having any symptoms, thank God. To give a better image on what exactly happened to me, as you see, this is the CAT scan of a regular human brain that is being highlighted in red with certain areas of the brain. As you see where the brain and the skull meets, if the brain gets swollen, it will actually hit the skull, which happened in my case, which can pretty much cause a really bad adverse reaction within your body. The receptors in my brain targeted my brain as if it was a foreign object, and my body began attacking itself, particularly though within my brain. That's why I went into a medical leave of absence and I was in intensive care for a couple months in Philadelphia. How did overcoming an autoimmune brain disease help me develop adaptive leadership that I could use to help other people within my society? I switched my major from biology to health studies because since I wanted to become a physician assistant, I wanted to learn more about how epidemics and diseases could manifest within society and how the healthcare system actually works versus just learning about various diseases through biology and concepts that I will most likely learn within physician school anyway. I used to view my brain disease as a negative event that occurred within my life. However, through my ability to adapt and overcome my autoimmune disease so rapidly, I used what happened to me to help other people. For example, a lot of my friends suffer from having autoimmune thyroid disorders, which disables a lot of my friends from losing weight. My best friend, Katie, has been dealing with Hashimoto's thyroid disease for about seven years now. She was misdiagnosed like I was at the same hospital and put in the same unit of the hospital that I was first put at in New Jersey because the doctors thought she had anxiety, quote unquote, when she really had Hashimoto's this entire time. Every day is like a battle for my best friend, but luckily she's strong as anything and she adapted just like me and I, she has me to help her and guide her through life. And she's finally losing weight by doing a diet called keto. However, for years, she never knew why she was gaining so much weight because she never really ate that bad at all. So why is understanding of higher education needed along with public health education? Understanding higher education and public health is important because depending on what career path the person chooses to pursue, higher education within their field is essential to have in order to become successful within their field. I chose to pursue higher education by going to Monmouth University as a health studies major because I want to be educated with the correct criteria to apply for physician assistant school. And I also want to understand more about the entire general concept of public health. Everything and anything can pertain to public health. Currently being a healthcare worker, meaning a medical assistant, during a pandemic is a prime example as to why education of new diseases such as COVID-19 is needed to understand and improve the current circumstances within public health. Now that I'm finally a senior, even though I was supposed to graduate in 2019, before getting a brain disease, I realized how important higher education is within the world of public health. The importance of higher education in public health is in order to be able to be a successful leader for various causes, any potential leader in the making needs to have a sufficient amount of education in the cause they are trying to improve or manifest. Public health is a general and broad title to an in-depth, intricate ideology of education. Anything in regard to the environment pertains directly to public health, for example. By a person having a higher education within the public health field, that person becomes a more well-rounded individual and a better candidate to become a leader to make a positive change or impact within their society. So my personal mission statement is to be able to live in a society where public health becomes a normal part of education and a student's curriculum in order to educate society on the variety of health issues that manifest within society daily. To be able to live in a society where healthcare workers are honest and compassionate towards their patients and strive to solve the issue of a patient's illness rather than just treating their symptoms. Treating symptoms of, of an illness does not cure the illness itself. Hey guys, it's Morgan. Thank you so much for viewing my presentation. Um, in regards to my references, the main reference I used was our Nordhaus Leadership Theory and Practice textbook that was given to us as a required text through Dr. Herschler's
class for summer B courses. In regards to my personal experiences and my personal trauma, that's why nothing was really cited because it was me explaining what I went through to you guys and shared my story with you guys to show how I represent a servant and adaptive leader within my life. Lastly, the images that were used were directly off the search engine of Bing. If you go into PowerPoint, hence where I made this video, you type in on online images like Apple, dog, etc. You can find any images and it's literally sponsored and you know, generated through the Bing search engine. I know other computers have like Google and Firefox for theirs, but mine's Bing. So I just want to let you guys know that if there wasn't a specific citation, it was just a really small blurb that came with the picture. That's what I literally got off of the computer, off my software. So thank you so much for listening to my story and my last video of the semester. And I hope you guys have a great day.